Welcome to our session. Uh, I'm Chef Scott Samuel, uh, Vice President of Culinary here with Ruby, uh, the world's largest online culinary school, along with my colleague, Dr. Randall McNamara. And today, online experiential learning. What or can it be done? So I've been with the company for um, a while here, and I've been a chef for years in the industry, uh, working with the Culinary Institute of America, uh, promoting health and wellness through industry conferences, partnered with Harvard Willett, or uh, Harvard Public School of Health and Walter Willett, and promoting health and wellness through teaching um, the arena. Uh, I want to introduce Dr. Ra Randall McNamara. Um, Randall? Yeah, thank you, Scott. Um, I want to send my best wishes to everybody affected by the weather or power outages over the past few days. Uh, good morning to everybody. I'm here today not only as a Ruby director, but as a former leader of on-ground culinary schools in the United States and abroad during the last two decades, where I was also a Ruby customer, a client, and a partner. So I know Ruby's products and service from both sides of the fence. My fortes are student learning outcomes, assessment, and accreditation. Some of the items we're going to cover today uh, are to review examples of our user data, a Ruby pedagogical approach, and the assessment of learning outcomes via the learning management system. Scott? All right, so uh, let's get right into it. The concept of online learning, can it be done? Well, Ruby has been doing this for about 15 years. We've had over 600,000 people go through our online programs. Um, and the programs have been designed to be very experiential with uh, concepts like image uploads, uh, chef reports, um, live graded activities. Uh, we're in over 62 countries around the world live. We've got clients like Marriott. Um, we have clients that are culinary schools and we've got thousands and thousands of consumers. So this has been going on for about 15 years. So the concept of can it be done? It can be done. And we have been doing it uh, with great success and large numbers. So Randall's gonna talk a little bit about how we do this. So I think it's clear to everybody after the past year that remote learning takes work and remote hands-on learning takes even more work. And assessing remote experiential learning is harder still. So the focal point of today's presentation is to share some of Ruby's experience in the world of hands-on learning uh, online in the hopes that some of our approaches uh, that we've taken can be useful to you or your college. A couple of things that will become evident right away. Uh, Ruby has a lot of experience and a staggering amount of data around student engagement, assessment, and user experience. The learning management system was specifically designed for remote hands-on learner, either as independent self-study or chef-guided training. And our secret sauce are our world-class instructors and student support. So Ruby instructors have significant culinary industry uh, experience or certifications and training. And most have taught previously in culinary schools, uh, in, in the higher education setting, uh, and, and oftentimes led their campus or department. So in addition to certificates and diplomas and degrees in culinary arts or hospitality, many of our faculty members also have advanced degrees in other uh, uh, disciplines. Our student support team is all within Ruby. We do not outsource student support. Uh, they work across time zones day and night to answer questions. And before we get too far along in on this discussion, uh, I do wanna define what we mean when we say experiential learning. Uh, this is not just hands-on learning. We mean specifically where the, the student um, uh, reflects on uh, uh, their learning process. So uh, this is reaffirmed in our platform 
after every task. Not only do they have to complete assignments, but they need to um, self-critique and thoughtfully explain why an assignment, a method, or a dish turned out well or not. So I think everybody on this um, presentation knows that uh, COVID has had a tremendous impact on higher education. Uh, uh, college incomes and revenues are down, uh, tuition revenues down, enrollments are down, auxiliary revenues are down, uh, yet the COVID-related expenses have gone up uh, by some estimates that uh, we've spent over $24 billion uh, either in uh, providing PPE for faculty and staff, the facilities cleaning and rearrangement, and most importantly, training and support for the move to an online or hybrid environment. Now, the silver lining in all of this is that teachers and instructors at every level have thought more about their pedagogy and how students can learn in an online environment. And many of you probably are already teaching online uh, or had experience prior to COVID. So some of these uh, statistics coming out of uh, most recent surveys of, of higher ed won't surprise you. The good news is that for all its detractors, higher ed pivoted quickly in the spring of, of last year <clears throat> to move much of their instruction online. Uh, a review of post-secondary remote learning found that 90% of classes taught online or in a, uh, were 90% of classes were taught either online or in a blended format many for the first time. So the issue is not about content. If you just Google how to make an omelet, you get 18 million results. And of that, about a million of them are videos. So, uh, you know, it's really about uh, not only presenting the information, but the learning. So 70% of uh, higher ed uh, 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 faculty responded that they use digital tools and technologies for the first time. And 60% said they embedded more active learning. But by most accounts, as I'm sure you know well, um, the, the, the part that was most impacted was the student experience. The students definitely struggled not only with the pandemic, but with their studies. And a result of this is that the dropout, failure, and withdrawal rate is up almost 40% at two-year colleges and 25% at four-year colleges. Now, we're not attributing all of that to the, to, to the online teaching, but uh, uh, it's clear that this, the, the student experience has, has suffered greatly. So I'm going to turn it back over to Scott to talk specifically about uh, Ruby and its platform and its partners and, and its programs. Quote from a famous chef, Marcus Samuelson, and I believe this. So in general, I want to give you an idea. We're going to give you a couple of graphs to show you what we're doing and how we're doing it. Thousands of high schools, that's considered institute. We have a CCAP, a career advancement program, and other partners, which would be Marriott, uh, culinary schools, uh, retirement communities, um, workforce education. I'll go into some of those partners. But as you can see, we've been doing it over the years. So this is an overview of a pre-assessment versus post-assessment. So students will take a self-assessment in the beginning. What do they think they know? Then they'll take a quiz that's not graded, but it will ask them uh, questions that are going to be taught throughout that unit. And that's the pre-assessment. Uh, pre and then we go into the post-assessment, which would be the quiz at the end of the unit. And this purple bar shows that the students are learning across the board. And this is a snapshot from uh, Marriott in, in, as a whole. And we've got uh, hundreds of actual Marriott locations. So online learning is the new standard of learning. Our programs are focused on teaching with self-study for consumers or chef-guided study on our enterprise clients. So an overview of our clients. Enterprise, we have Marriott, Four Seasons, Hyatt, Compass Group, um, Healthcare and Senior Living, we're working with Trilogy. We've got thousands of students on Trilogy. We're working with Morrison Healthcare. Um, schools, in the last 10 months, um, I've been part of onboarding over 80 culinary schools within the US and around the world because of the pandemic. And in doing so, California Community Colleges was one of our main clients. We've got over 25 schools and 700 students using our platform. 
with great success. So a lot of these uh, schools have come in, they've already got a curriculum and they're using Ruby to supplement what they're doing in a hybrid format. So once I get to the program and show you what it looks like, sometimes they would use it sequentially. Sometimes they might, might assign units based on what they're teaching. We also have a lot of clients in the workforce education um, arena with Catalyst Kitchens, focus on teaching um, people of need. Uh, Kitchens for Good is one of our clients in San Diego who's had great success with Ruby. So Ruby in general is focused on consumer and enterprise and our programs are created for that client. So our professional cook certification, Plant-Based Pro would be a consumer focused program. We do have enterprise programs that are focused on the methodology of cooking. Um, and our programs are American Culinary Federation certified so that when the student graduates, they have a certificate that, that says they have 110 hours of continuing education hours that they, they can apply to becoming certified. We have over 13 courses and over 75 individual lessons and the membership um, part of our program is one of the most popular for consumers. So how does it work? So what is Ruby? What does it look like? How does this work? So we deliver our content through text, uh, video and interactive activities. So the experience part of it is watching a video, which our videos are focused on the method and the technique and close up on what has been, uh, what is being taught. We don't have any chefs looking at the camera telling you how a recipe would be done. And then after the video, then we're gonna test, did you learn anything? We'll do an activity like a drag and drop or a resequence or a live graded activity where you're actually doing something in front of an instructor in the kitchen and the kitchen and the instructor has an ability to grade it on the back end. So the Ruby programs for enterprise are made up of 90% online content, about 6% of our Ruby and grader, our Ruby instructor graded and then about 4% of live graded by the chef in the house. So there's a variety of experiences. Our Ruby chefs, we've got about five, maybe 10 on the house. And then our support team will be the ones supporting the students along the way while the chef on the location is all actually uh, walking the student through their process. So I'll get into the program here in a second to show you what it looks like. So you get a better visual, but our tools are meant to provide the supervisor who is running the program with the tools to manage the student's progress, understand what they're learning and how they're learning, and also for the cook or the student to see how the progress is going. Uh, there's a leaderboard that shows where they stand within their uh, operation. And then uh, a snapshot of what our assessment summary might look like. This is from a great student who's gone through uh, level one culinary foundations for enterprise. And this is where we were able to measure the delta and change between pre-assessment, what they think they know, versus what they've learned after Ruby. So you can see the percentages have gone up here based on uh, the teaching of Ruby. So this is an overview to show you the volume that we've done in the last five years, the number of tasks completed. So any given uh, course will have between 100 to 200 tasks that need to be completed to get through the program. And it could take anywhere from 10 hours to 70 hours to complete a course. So last year alone, we had 4.6 million tasks completed by students. So we've been doing this with success over the years. Uh, a lot of the experience for the students is actually cooking something and taking a picture and posting it with specific criteria that's gonna be graded by our Ruby chefs criteria on the visual of it, um, the technique. So we can grade a lot except for texture and taste. So the criteria is based on this and this, the students will upload images of their work that we can actually get to grade in the back end. So over the last five years, over 600,000 image uploads. And then certifications. At the end of a program, a student is certified for completing the content they receive a certification, like I said, as ACF certified and World Chef Society certified. So in the last five years, you can see we've had over 200,000 certifications. 
We also offer a great platform, which we call live events. So every week we have two or three live events where we're producing um, an event from a chef's home at this moment, where they're talking about a certain topic, be it plant-based cooking, be it vegan desserts or open office hours. And this is a little bit what it looks like. It's a uh, opportunity for our students to jump online and ask questions. Uh, here on the right is my colleague, Eric Weinkoop, who, who does open office hours, which is basically uh, stump the chef. Ask the chef any question. What's your favorite knife? What's your favorite saute pan? Tell me about the cuisines of Asia. And uh, this is recorded. So we have over 600 of these archived and every week we're presenting a new topic with a new group of students. So in the last five years, we've done over 600 live events. Like I said, a couple of week. So I'm gonna go into a demo here on the actual platform. And if you do have any questions, um, please drop them into the chat because at the end of this presentation, we're gonna do a Q&A to make sure everybody has an understanding. Okay, so this is Kitchens for Good, uh, one of our workforce education clients in San Diego. And this is what Ruby looks like. Our user experience has a dashboard. Every student has a personalized dashboard. In this case, the student has the courses of level one and level two, which are focused on enterprise. Uh, we have egg foundations and functionality plant-based, but this is where all the courses are listed. And if we dive into it, I wanna show you how we teach. So everything is broken up into units and this would be culinary foundations overview. And within a unit, you're gonna have a lesson and these are the tasks that need to be completed. So let's talk, drop into where we first start teaching content, which would be knives, knife cuts, and knife sharpening. So there's a variety of experiences throughout this will give the student a chance to do what they've learned. So in this case, we would go into a video selecting a knife set and just a sample of what our videos look like. The first and most important step in becoming a good so like I noted, focused on high quality video, close up of the actual technique. So the student would be able to watch a uh, video and this is what our uh, task page will look like. They can complete it by completing the task and then move to the next task. And in doing this, now we're gonna ask them questions that they were just taught within the video and see if they've learned it. So Ruby is made up of practice activities, things that the student can do over and over and reset. They're also made up of activities that are gonna count like quizzes that our chefs are gonna grade or the platform itself will grade. So this is a simple activity where we're going to make sure did the student learn what was just taught in the previous task? And as a student, I would grade this. And I did terrible. So we have this flambe function on all of our practice activities. We burn it off and try it again. So this is one of the experiences littered throughout Ruby's courses that gives the students a chance to redo it and continue learning. So our homepage for every course will look similar to this, broken into tasks. I did talk about the beginning of every unit was gonna have the self-assessment and a pre-assessment so we can measure what do they think they know. And in this case, this uh, person thinks they know 50% about knives. And then they went into the next task, which was going to be a quiz. And taking the quiz will measure what do you actually know about the subject. So at the end of the day, we're actually gonna be able to get a graph that shows us, did they learn? And that's one of those charts that I showed you. Uh, I did mention live graded. So this is where the experience um, comes into the kitchen. So a lot of Ruby is online learning, but we wanna make sure the students are actually doing a task in front of somebody, their chef, their, inst uh, their instructor, the evaluator. In this case, it'd be coming into the kitchen and doing specific knife cutting techniques. Um, she got 100% on this. This is how the instructor graded it from the back end, which I'll show you quickly. But all of these live graded activities have a specific criteria that we've matched the rubric for grading on the back end. So going through all of our units, and this is specifically that we work with uh, enterprise and uh, culinary schools, at the end of every unit, we're gonna do an assessment. And we have this great tool that we call uh, our flashcards. So now we're gonna go in and ask the student questions that have been taught throughout the unit. In this case, uh, about knife skills, dicing is 
Simply slice an integrity in three different directions to create uniform cubes. Correct. So as a student, I can kind of see my tally here, got 100%. If I keep going and if my score is less than 100% and I'm not knowing exactly what I'm going to do before I go into the quiz, I will burn that off and try that again before I go into the assessment for each unit on that topic. In this case, this was run through, did not get a great score because it was a sample. Um, and this is where we can reach out to the instructors at Ruby and make a note. Can you please reset this and try it again? So we appeal to the Supreme Court and then we will reset it for the student. So practice activities and activities that count is what makes up the learning of Ruby. So you can always keep boosting your education. Uh, and this is just a sample of what a report card would look like for all the assessments, anything that's graded throughout a student's course. All right, there's lots of other features with Ruby where we get to set goals with students. Um, a student can say, I wanna get better at saute. I wanna to learn to um, braise. I wanna become an executive chef. So the dashboard is a great place for the student to personalize their work. Um, and this is once again, the homepage where our courses are lined up I will mention while we're here, our live events that I pointed out. So this is uh, happening uh, next Tuesday. My colleague, Chef Ken, will do open office hours. And this is just a chance for as many people who want to join and ask questions. So this is a general overview of a enterprise site. I'm gonna go back into the teacher backend and show you how we can manage students. So the students won't see this, but we can manage um, groups of classes. So right now, California community colleges, each of their schools are managing different classes in this, in this manner. So if we go into an actual student, and this is just a test, test student to show you work that's done, each student will have a profile that I can go in and take a look at how they're doing at any given moment. So I'm gonna go into Culinary Foundations one that I won, the one I was looking at, and it looks like the student has completed all the tasks. They're all green check marks. Uh, so I have a timestamp to see when they did it. So this is great for instructors. If they were to assign a unit to be done by a certain time, you can come in and see when they did it and how they, uh, then we go into the accessible tasks and see how they did. So at any given moment, I can go into a student and see their grades. So in this case, um, lots of great grades. Anything like I noticed as a practice activity is not gonna to count towards your final assessment, but we can at least see that the student tried here to get 100%. Uh, for the live graded, this is where we would have the tool on the back end for the teacher, the evaluator to grade. So we do provide criteria for each of the uh, teachers so it's standardized and the student knows exactly what they're being graded on. And then as, as soon as you grade and uh, send this, the student gets a note. If the student's not happy with the grade, they can ask the instructor to regrade it. And then we have a regrade function. So I know this is a lot of information, but I wanted to dive into the depths of Ruby and how we teach. Um, a great view here, and I showed this slide in the beginning, is this test student has gone through and done all the self-assessments. So for nutrition in the kitchen, um, they knew 30%. And by the time they tested out, they learned. So this is a great delta of learning. So that concludes the, the demo of actually one aspect of Ruby. Like I said, we have 13 different courses. Uh, this would be one of the courses um, in terms of what we use for culinary schools, which we've been working with a lot in the last 10 months. Um, let's, uh, Randall. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Uh, so, I mean, one thing that uh, we've experienced uh, over the past year is you know, about a 220% increase uh, year over year in the amount of learners. Um, and with that comes a, a, a lot of opportunities and uh, uh, unique situations. Uh, we, we certainly recognize there are, are equity issues around technology uh, with the hardware itself, uh, uh, internet issues and so on and so forth. And that's, uh, you know, that's in every educational environment uh, across the globe. Um, as far as access to uh, ingredients and supplies, uh, some, some on-ground schools and workplaces have um, come up with some innovative 
ways to address this. Uh, some culinary schools are actually issuing the food product directly from the school. And, and one in particular, and I believe it's Miami-Dade, uh, they uh, have a system whereby the food is, is delivered to the student uh, via Amazon. Um, we certainly understand that uh, systems integration is complex in the, in the remote environment. When you start uh, working across platforms and uh, uh, have different applications and third-party vendors and so on and so forth, uh, it's, uh, for, for Ruby, it's not one size fits all. And I, I hope you saw through that demonstration, uh, it's not just a standalone static um, uh, platform where a student gets, goes on and, they, and, 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 and that's it. Uh, you know, as, as Scott mentioned, we, we teach on site or, or through the, the employee chef instructors where they will grade um, a, a, as well as um, uh, the graded uh, assessments through Ruby. And, and finally, uh, with the, the increase of um, uh, learners, we've also had a, a large request for more specialized types of training, such as garmage or additional international uh, cookery and, and so on and so forth. Um, before we get into the q and I do just want to leave you with a few takeaways that I, that I think are the, the, you know, the outstanding strengths of, of Ruby and its platform. Uh, number one, it's, it's a focus on the cooking techniques itself and those performance outcomes. It's, 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 it's not about... Um, uh, using the commercial equipment per se. Um, it, it, it's really uh, focusing on the cooking process and reflections by the students, not a focus on, on grades. Um, the other thing you'll find is that you have, even though we, we have some customization, depending on where uh, the learner is, is um, accessing, whether it's in the workplace or in a college environment, uh, we do have a standardized, consistent, quality learner experience and platforms. So very quickly, the student understands how to progress through all of Ruby's programs. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I, th I think Scott mentioned, uh, some of our programs are in multiple languages. Uh, we, we, we focus on the technique and showing uh, uh, the process of preparing a dish, not focusing on the chef and the chef speaking. So it voiceovers a lot easier. We do allow students to substitute ingredients if they have difficulty finding them or accessing them or, or can't afford them. Uh, the focus again is on technique. If they can do it uh, with a carrot as, as opposed to, to something else, well, by all means, go ahead. And then finally, it's that direct personalized instructor feedback. As Scott showed you, um, all of those summative assessments are auto graded. So uh, the instructors are not grading quizzes uh, in that way. The student keeps uh, learning and practicing until they master the material on the summative part. And then when they're ready for the formative uh, assessment, that's when it's instructor and graded, either by the Ruby chefs or by um, their, their chef uh, at the workplace. So with that, I will turn it back over to Scott and then we'll move on to questions and answers. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to make a note if we haven't already that our learning management system has been created internally. So we are able to ingest other content. Uh, a lot of culinary schools will take our content as is and then they want an additional course developed for what they're teaching above and beyond what we have. Um, also, the, the student experience with uh, grading is excellent because our Ruby instructors are giving them great feedback on what they've done, and they can always reset their grade. And the same thing as this being used as a tool in culinary schools. I, I know a lot of teachers that I've talked to in the last few months are using this as a kind of a hybrid and plug it into their canvas and directing students to different units to do their work so that the students get to actually learn before they do a Zoom meeting to see a demo or before they come into the kitchen do, to do an actual braise. And the students have this for a lifetime. So we'd like to promote this as kind of a digital culinary library. You have this forever. You can always go back and watch that video again on how to saute because you might've been in the kitchen and you missed the demo or you were in the back and you couldn't see it or couldn't hear. 
here you have the choice to go in and learn and learn and learn. So with that, um, thank you. And we'd like to take uh, some questions if you do have any questions with regards to what we're doing here at Ruby. Hi, this is Seha Ann. I'm from Cal State East Bay. Thank you yeah. so much for your presentation. Um, um, I know we are offering some of the food and beverage classes at our um, department. And I was wondering if you can share this um, uh, PowerPoint or any kinds of digital, you know, electronic, um, um, you know, PowerPoint or material so that I can send it to my instructors. They might be interested. And we do have some funds that we want to, uh, you know, actually purchase some simulations and all that. So if you have any materials that you can send it to us, that would be great. Yes, definitely. Um, on that note, I just want to give you a quick uh, overview of we keep talking about it, but without actually seeing uh, what we're teaching, this is kind of a quick overview of culinary foundations level one and level two in terms of the content that we're teaching. So we of course start with knife cuts and food safety, and then we go into our dry heat cooking, moist heat cooking. Uh, so people who uh, use this will either use it sequentially and walk them through unit by unit, or they can assign uh, Ruby to different levels of cooks in the kitchen, be it a prep cook, a grill cook, and a sous chef. And let's say you're a sous chef and we want you to learn more about sauces and meat cookery. We're gonna send you to those units immediately. So definitely we can follow up with a share on this. Thanks for the question. Perfect, thank you. Maybe I missed the pricing at the beginning because I joined a little bit later. Um, any price information that you maybe oh, yeah. have? We didn't really go over pricing. We we're more talking about uh, the learning experience okay. and uh, so forth. But if you would like, we can follow up with you on pricing also. And you can also check out ruby.com, R-O-U-X-B-E.com. And we have uh, the business side and the individual side. Yeah. I'll actually, that. Scott, um, actually, if, if you go to ruby.com forward slash schools, you'll have pricing there as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question here from Suzanne. When instructors are grading on the back end, do students upload videos of their tasks or are these in person uh, at school labs? So a couple different uh, things here. Um, there are activities where the students will upload an image of the work that they're doing. So they're taking a picture of a recipe or the different parts of a recipe from mise en place to in progress to the final product. So those are the activities where the student will upload an image and then the instructor can view the images, see the criteria and grade it. Um, the live graded ones are the activities where the student has a task to do, be it a pan fried chicken or sauteed mushrooms or make an omelet. So the student will come into the kitchen and the chef will be ready to grade them. So the food will be there, the students will be there, the chef will grade that in person. That's the difference between an image upload and a live graded. Um, at the moment, we're not uploading videos for uh, assessments, but we're working on that as a platform, an extra place to have a student upload a video. We've had a lot of different requests in the last 10 months that the live graded won't work. We're not in person. We're hundred percent remote. Okay, well, let's, we're gonna be creating a program that will give you the opportunity to upload videos if you're remote. So thanks Suzanne for the question. All right, anybody on this call have, have heard of Ruby before this call? All right, are there any other questions on the details of our learning platform? Mind you, we just showed you one um, aspect of the learning, the Culinary Foundations Level One with Kitchens for Good, one of our clients. Um, the, the learning platform for the enterprise side looks very similar to that for all of our courses, uh, but we have a whole side of membership courses where you can join as a member as a, a monthly rate and dive in on your own and learn how to make pasta or learn how to cook rice. And each of those lessons are set up in the same way where there's an introduction, tasks, video, and then um, a review. Uh, one more question, if you don't mind. We got time, sure. I guess. Um, so any like simulations or, you know, scenario-based learning platform or, you know, um, lectures you have? Um, nothing specifically to that. We do have like the live graded ones, which are not specifically lectures. We do have sometimes that are a topic and we'll go over a certain topic on plant-based cooking or holiday meals or, or what have you. But specifically, we don't have lectures within Ruby for a certain 
task mm -hmm. or a certain topic. Mm -hmm. um, the learning management system can, if you're wanting to customize, can pull in a link and point to a lecture. So suppose you're teaching dry heat cooking and you love what Ruby is offering, but you had some lectures or some points that you all, we'll just put in bullets or uh, hyperlinks into your uh, course so that you can have the students be directed there. Scott, uh, related to that, there's a couple of questions in the chat yeah. about third party uh, LMS uh, and linking uh, Ruby. Yeah. So the, the LMS system is integrated with Blackboard and Canvas in a way that you're able to download all the data and all the grades from our grade book. So let's say you have 80 students in a class, they've completed you know, all 160 tasks with uh, culinary level one, you can download the CSV and then Canvas with the right code, you can upload it to Canvas. But we're not directly relate, uh, integrating with an API at the moment. Uh, the one way that the uh, instructors have been using Blackboard and Canvas with Ruby is incorporating the hyperlink within to their program. So Canvas has their uh, curriculum and they'll go into a certain task and say, we'd love you to go to food safety, click this link, open food safety, do this lesson, complete the ses assessment and get a 80% or above. So that integration where we can do hyperlinks to their platform and then uploading the information to populate the grades. Great. Well, I appreciate all the questions. Uh, my colleague Tom noted that we can federate with Canvas through a single sign-on, which we've done with a few clients. All right. Any other uh, points that you'd like to bring up, uh, Randall, that we might not have uh, covered? I think we, we covered what we wanted to. This is terrific. I appreciate everybody coming out today. Uh, stay warm, stay dry, and uh, have an amazing rest of the conference and uh, a wonderful weekend.